activities or mm -hmm. school or whatnot. They were coming from. Is this work. a live picture on the right hand side? Like, we're asking my. Oh, this okay, is live. Yeah. So wow, we've got a SWAT officer, and, and it looks like he's. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, guys, is he up like near the second floor? Looks like he's peeking from around the top. Because yeah. this is a two-story yeah. home, and I know our vantage point kind of only gets midway up on the first floor. So there's a street sign there, um, and so it's always difficult to tell the angle of the camera, but he is looking across, I think, the top of a street sign, so elevated in some regard, but I don't know what we can do to this shot. Is he elevated on a SWAT vehicle? Elevated. Looks like he's peeking around a, a house, but I can't, it looks like it, I don't know. He's got that rifle right there. On the, on the ridge of the is home. Is that a house? Yeah, there you that's go. A, he's peeking around the side of the house, and that side is lit up. It is. Is this uh, the yeah. actual home that's, this, that's barricaded? The, is this the lit up? Okay, so this is the lit up side. Okay, we're. This is the side of the home now. We've in. been staring at the yeah. front for a long okay. time, and now. Just verifying. This is the same house. This is the lit up side on the right. Thank you, producers, for that. This is the right hand side. Remember, we said it was activity and light on the right hand side. So this is the right hand side of the house. Yeah. Yeah. And Wes so, described that crashing sound. Um, that had happened most recently. Okay, so, so that's a retracting arm right there. That looks like they're going in, or the arm is, excuse me, the arm is, looks like it's gonna try to breach maybe. This is that piece of machinery I think Jessica was talking about called uh, the Rook. It's a SWAT yep, and it, it, it basically it's just can, just, uh, it's got a little hook on the end and it can just basically rip that house apart as you're seeing it do right now. Well, you know, it gets to the point where they're like, if you're not going to come out, we're, we're gonna come in and get you or at least expose your vantage point, right? They're getting this to the point where, you know, where are you going to be inside the house if the outer walls are essentially ripped open? Um, this is... And this is dangerous. Right, this, this, is this is dangerous this is, this work, is right? That's what I was thinking. One of the most dangerous periods of, of the SWAT standoff, right, is when it all comes down to the line and they potentially could be either confronted by him or make contact with him, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And so, um, they're they're obviously taking you know precautionary angles. Yeah, and this we'll see this SWAT officer. What are you what are you pointing at there, Rudy? We've got our floor director. Do you see some movement, Rudy? There's a there's a oh, okay. Well, it looks is like that it, a, uh, uh, it's really is that debris? That's a hand. Okay. Because so the, the the SWAT. Rudy, our um, floor director, says the, he sees the, a hand there. And the SWAT person has been giving direction. That was, that that was did look hand. like a human hand. It did look like a hand. That's right, Rudy. Has very good eyes there. So you can see the SWAT officer there. He again, he's shielding himself beside this. Okay. Uh, yeah, because the SWAT officer yeah. has been giving whoever's working this piece of machinery direction. Mm -hmm. I saw him give the the person who's moving this piece of machinery a thumbs up a second ago. Okay. So the SWAT officer has got is either able to look in another window on the back, but it is very odd that you're seeing. All of the insulation come yeah, out of this house outer is wall. Yeah, they're, they're um, and, and they've been able to isolate it and get it to this part of the house, right? Maybe that's what the robot dog was doing, giving intel between that and whatever other type of communication or intel they had. They've narrowed it down to this, I guess, back room or side of the house here. And you're seeing all this unfold live as they're they're ripping out portions of that that room. We've seen what looks to be a human hand popping out at one point. And this is the power of this equipment, we should note, that it can ram essentially into the side of a two-story building and essentially lay bare There's anything that's coming inside. Out. So there so must be a closet, closet right there, Looks yes. Like a closet ripping out the rail of, of clothes. So this was maybe uh, a, a bedroom perhaps and an inside closet. Um, because remember, uh, you know. You wonder if that, that Robot okay. dog, yes, the robot see. dog told them where to go Do we and, see and cornered him. Eric, you see that Rudy pointing Ru out again? Our floor director is saying that he sees some Another sort of with that just below out. the just below the arm yeah. here. Oh, where that, the that, mechanical that, arm, yeah. Mm -hmm, that pile of clothes right there, it looked like it was a, a, some more hand movement. Um, so this is your live look from Umble right now. We are in hour number four of a SWAT standoff, and we are essentially watching some very aggressive attempts to remove a suspect that has shot several law enforcement officers, according to the Harris County Sheriff's Office, to get him back into custody, out on bond. Is that a person's... Is that, a is that another? 
body part looks like from the lower part. You see where the, the clothes are, the, the flower, the floral shirt or dress or whatever it is. He looked like that was a hand going going in and out there. I mean, not that it matters. It looks like it's women's clothing here in a closet being ripped out. So again, we have no idea whose house this belongs to, but uh, law enforcement was able to zone in on it and, and identify that that's where their guy, their suspect, Teron Green, was and, and um, was in there, holed up, basically barricaded. And so this is the heavy equipment brought in um, by the SWAT team in order to do this work. And as we continue to watch what's happening live, you know, the end goal to all of this is to locate this person, make it to where they cannot escape law enforcement and force them to surrender, hopefully in a peaceful manner. But again, this is a looks to be on the top floor of a two-story house in the Umble area where the SWAT equipment is has breached the outside wall of the home and is digging through, digging through. We believe we've seen a human hand or a body part from the inside moving. Uh, law enforcement has told us the person is inside, alive, alone, and as of right now, still refusing to come out. But we are watching what might be happening next because it seems like they are getting very close to this individual. Yeah. yeah. And that's where the, I think that kind of lull was, guys, where we said we didn't hear anything, we didn't see anything. Obviously, they were calling in more resources and figuring out what the next game plan was. And, and this is what it is, right? We knew it was going to be something. But uh, here's our answer. It looks like they've got uh, kind of a robotic arm digging out of a closet. Well, and I want to check back in with Jessica Willie. I know that we've got Wes looking through the camera lens and she can't quite see what we are all seeing, but are you hearing anything from your sources at this point about these next steps? What's happening now, Jessica? It's been pretty quiet right now um, as this is happening and I want to tell you that so we moved from one side of a yard to another side so we can bring you this full picture here and the right side of the house uh, the north side of the house where they are focused on as they kind of dig through this side of the house through that closet it appears you know they pulled out a rack of clothes and and other things falling out and we see the SWAT officer kind of hanging around hanging on the side peeking in peeking through we haven't seen him in a in a couple of minutes uh, but it seems like you know he's he's kind of giving direction uh, for where to put this arm as they uh, continue to breach this house uh, where they believe the suspect is still inside and alive uh, after so many hours of this uh, standoff uh, they are focused on the north side of the house here um, not as much on the front side of the house so that's why we kind of we kind of shifted shifted positions uh, so we can get you uh, a better a better view of uh, what's happening and yeah as we just came out made it a little wider you can see uh, you know the, just the side of the house that siding um, with the brick on the front uh, but everything is all on that side uh, with the light with the heavy equipment and uh, you know officers uh, you know at least one kind of hanging off the back on that second floor um, trying to trying to figure out where the suspect might be everything seems to be kind of in that room that's where that uh, the robot was earlier that the drone was in there earlier also and uh, you know they've been trying to communicate with him I'm not sure if he has talked to them back um, but we have not heard that loudspeaker in some time uh, the, that they have been uh, talking through uh, for when, when we were here you know first here earlier in the in the night um, we haven't heard that for, for some time so you know perhaps they're talking to him through another another way a cell phone or uh, through the robot some more debris coming out of the house it looks like they they might be on the back side also uh, doing doing something because that's not that side anymore right that looks like the back the back of the house and we don't you know we don't have any access over there i mean they locked that 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 part of the neighborhood down that street down um, hours ago silhouette ridge is the, the the name of the street where this house where this house is where those uh, two officers were shot and the other one injured with uh, flying shrapnel um, around 6 30 6 45 this evening um, as they uh, honed 
zoomed in on this the suspect it was the Gulf Coast Violent Offenders Task Force who uh, you know they're approaching the house they're the ones who go out and, and find these violent uh, fugitives uh, this man of course accused of shooting critically wounding a uh, deputy last night and then wounding two more officers uh, this evening um, two to three more officers this evening so certainly they are handling him with care considering him very dangerous uh, he fired on officers so they know that they that he has a weapon they have not recovered the gun um, that they believe he used last night um, and they don't know what kind of other weapons as you said might be inside of that house and this is the tactic they're using right now the drone has kind of pulled off we haven't seen the robot uh, we although we believe it's still in there we have not seen it come out um, and then we have not seen any more officers go in through the front of the house um, in quite some time. Some went, out, went in earlier. But uh, yeah, th this is developing somewhat. Yeah, you know, it's slow going. This is, it's patience is what it's all about. They're trying to keep uh, people as safe as possible while also trying to apprehend the suspect who they consi consider very dangerous. Yeah, thank you for that, Jessica. I mean, dangerous indeed. Um, you know, he's, he's already been accused of um, shooting four deputies, four law enforcement officers. And so, as we've been saying, you know, for hours, this all comes down to the wire here. And, and it seems like they've upped the ante and, and increased their tactics and become more aggressive here. Um, what you're looking at, if you're just tuning in, is um, SWAT teams have brought in a, a robotic arm, if you will, piece of machinery to basically rip apart this house. Looks like they're ripping out the insides of a closet because we've seen clothes and, and, and lines coming out. Uh, it also looks like we've seen a human hand at one point come out. So that could that be the suspect, Ron Green? That's what we believe, yes, because we know he's in there alone, that nobody else is in the house. So uh, is that his arm? Probably so. Um, but there is a... Um, you know, SWAT officers who are giving this robotic machine directions on, on where to go and, and where to hit, where to strike next. And you see that arm extending inside. It's knocked out the wall and anything, the clothing that, you know, might be there obstructing their vantage point. Um, so, you know, this is all to gain access to the suspect, to the individual take them into custody. If they're not going to give themselves up, then still safely take them into custody. And, you know, as they're speaking to him, like Jessica said, we don't know if he's talked back. They're trying to gauge um, the safety in getting into his space, right? Because we feel like we saw a hand or human movement there. Uh, but, you know, the closer they get to him, the more dangerous it becomes for the law enforcement officers that are, that are there in that area. Um, that arm has gone inside now, and I guess I'm, you know, we're... It's extended pretty far in there now. It looks yeah. like it, then, I mean, it's breached and it's made, it's made its way in there. And so uh, there's been a combination of tools being used all night. The drones, uh, the rook, the kind of arm that's been going in, uh, the robotic dog that, uh, you know, has had cameras and uh, given law enforcement visuals. And so I think the combination of all that led them to kind of hone in on this particular side of the house. Um, and what we believe to be a closet, right? Maybe he was holed up in a closet. Yeah, at this point, the SWAT team with their um, their destruction equipment, I guess is almost the way to think about it. It's almost a masterclass on how many holes you can punch into a house and, and still yeah. leave it standing, right? Um, they've hit the front several times. Now they've moved to the side here and um, Apparently, this, this some sort of communication brought them to this side of the house. And it looks like there's some movement there. You see the kind of there in the silhouette of the window there. It looked like it's it's some movement going on. I, I saw some flutters of movement. So, I don't know. I and mean, it's a key question, like Lisa was saying. Have they been able to make contact with him recently? Has he responded back? Yeah, there's you know, that SWAT officer he's again. He's peeking his peeking head around. around the corner. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, and what becomes the purpose, you have to wonder, of approaching him on the second floor? You know, obviously, you're exposing his position. Um, maybe perhaps because we see all the clothes, we, we feel like this was a closet. They've exposed his position, uh, given him one less place inside the house to hide. But at this point, you know, how do you pull him out of a second floor closet? How does that begin to unfold? Um, you know, the, how you see in the movies or how you've seen in other literal SWAT standoffs that we've covered, you know, they're, they're walking them out the front door somehow, some way, or out of a window. They've torn a hole in the side of the house. So, right. um, 
you know, if you're not going to be near a, a window or a door, they'll, they'll make an opening um, in order to uh, bring you out. That's right, and, and, and again, as we've been saying, since they have him cornered and believed to be barricaded in a place, they're not gonna let him just walk out of here easily. He's going in, in custody or something, you know, and if he even is able to slip out of the house somehow, there's a massive perimeter around this neighborhood and somebody is going to, and, and that's how law enforcement works, right? That, that's their goal, that's their plan. They wanna be able to identify where he is and then have him cornered. And the technology and the advances here in the last decade are truly incredible, how they use drones and robotics and other equipment to just to get inside of a home. They don't have to do as much guessing as they did 10 or 20 years ago. They can get a good idea um, with heat seeking equipment and the like of where an individual is inside yeah. the home. When the, and you can see that SWAT officer still holding on to the side of the house and so um, you know, this has got to end somehow. And we, we have crews there that have been uh, staying in place and holding it steady for hours. Kudos to them. They've been giving us great vantage points. Wes Sewell, our, our photographer out there, with our Jessica Willie, they've been giving us amazing uh, close uh, looks at what exactly is going on in real time. Our Daniela Hurtado, she's at the staging area as well, a couple of blocks away. So this is ongoing, and uh, some families are still in limbo haven't been able to get to their homes or to their street while this is going on. And so that's probably a factor as well uh, of why they want this to end sooner than later. I mean, of course they wanna bring this guy down, they wanna bring him to justice, but then also uh, the longer this goes on, this is gonna inconvenience quite a few people in this neighborhood who have school and work tomorrow. Uh, but of course they wanna keep their SWAT officers safe, they wanna keep their, their task force members, the U.S. Marshals safe, uh, and, and they want this guy to be brought out peacefully. I've been saying that all night, that is the goal number one. They, they would like to do it that way, but of course, um, you know, anything can happen in, in the blink of an eye, and, and their goal is to protect themselves first. Right, and they're not gonna, uh, they, are not going to end. They they're not going to risk letting him get out in right. their I, in their vantage point. They're not going to li risk letting him get out of that house to hurt someone else. That's right. This He's is already it. shot four people. They have, four law enforcement officers, we should say, deputies. They've so. ripped multiple ho holes in the home, and have been watching him. Uh, you're right. The preference is for him to come out peacefully, but they're going to put an end to this. You know, and if either he were way, to He's not continue going to leave his the house. streak, you know, at least in Eric and. God forbid starts trying to shoot his way out. It may not end well for him because, um, you know, he's already hit several people, um, severely hurting Deputy Joseph Anderson with the Harris County Sheriff's Office. And so, um, yeah, I mean, they, they have to make split decisions. The SWAT team does. I mean, depending on what he does, I mean, hopefully, he, you know, he comes out peacefully. But again, if he, if he decides to fight his way out, they're prepared for that, too. And if you think about it this way, in the last 24 hours, this is their third attempt to put him in the custody. Yeah. There was the original traffic stop sure. 24 hours ago, which began the manhunt, right? Because he shot a deputy critically injuring Deputy Joseph Anderson, who is still at the Texas Medical Center. You know, when you talk about that, Elisa, now it kind of comes to light, though. Now we understand a little bit of his motive right. because he was out on bond and he knew what was going to happen. He was out on bond for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and a felon in possession. I think we see an arm. You see an arm? Um, there's a green light. Yeah, that is definitely an arm because yeah. there's a... Uh, yeah, and that was a, and a light from a weapon. Too. Good eyes, Rudy. They've they put a they put a, a light or a beam on him to highlight where exactly is it. Looks like an arm there. Um, does that mean he's attempting to come out? Does that mean he's is he trying to show he has nothing in his okay. hands? Okay, that's his arm. He's trying to show he has nothing at least in that hand. We haven't seen two hands, but uh, I'm sure they've. They've told him you need to show us your hands. Okay, both, both hands, hands right now. Both hands have let us know he has no weapons in his hands. At this point, I'm sure they're going to try to apprehend him. We have not seen any movement from the officer that we believe is right around the corner still. I do believe right. you can see the just the edge of that officer around that corner. Uh, and you wonder in what way they would get him down from that second floor. Does the machinery help them? Does that officer come around? And do they come or does somebody come up? you know, from the front and try to go upstairs if there's any stairs left. I mean, we don't know what's left, but uh, to try to come in that way. But um, they, as you said, they forced him out. They forced his hand. They've been able to identify where he was in the house. And you wonder how they did that, too. I, you can only imagine that it was because of that robotic dog. Robotic dog. Had maybe cornered he's, him. He's Locking. giving commands right here. You see that? Sorry yeah. to cut you guys off, but yeah. he's giving commands. Uh, 
presumably to, to Green, either to surrender, give himself up, something. And so it's a, you're in a precarious position at this point because that's not a spot where you should be walking around. Exactly. If you're a roofer or have ever had a roofer come to your house, you're physically in a dangerous spot sure. anyway. So he's shown his hands, he's receiving commands, and now let's see how they manage getting him into custody in an area that's already a little bit precarious to be doing work on. Well, you wonder why at yeah. this point he just wouldn't come downstairs and walk out the front door with his hands up. Because he can't really walk he, out Because he going to get out there. of this, this? Is he going to jump from a second floor? I mean, they've got to get him out somehow. Um, Unless the, the house is so, interior is, is so demolished at this point that he can't make his way to the front door. But that, that's kind of hard well. to comprehend. It would be, the interior would be that, that demolished. But that doesn't really seem like a spot he can really come out of. And we don't know what's going on from the ground either. We don't know if they're trying to send crews in, you know, from the ground level. Right. Well, and, well, and well he's up occupied And there. go up the stairs if there's stairs left, Let's right? See what but comes out with the arm. He's on it. Oh, he's on he's it. He's on it. Oh, he's, he's on, on it. the arm. And you can see law enforcement has a weapon trained on him. That's the green dot right there uh, in case anything happens. So that, that is definitely a rifle um, they laser. They take care of business if they yes. have to because, again, this guy, armed, dangerous, has shot three law enforcement deputies. Another was hit with shrapnel. They are not playing with this guy. And certainly they had people waiting on the ground for him. Sure. So after a 24 hour plus manhunt going on probably 30 hours now, uh, the man you're looking at on the left hand side of your screen, 34 year old Teron Green, uh, who was already uh, out on bond with an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and felon in possession, uh, shot a deputy last night, shot Three more, technically tonight. Yep. Two he grazed. One was hit by shrapnel. Yeah. So four total deputies he's injured in the last 30 plus hours. It all comes to an end with him riding on the arm of a SWAT And, and he's got to know. Equipment. We don't know who he's had contact with the last 24 hours. His mom, girlfriend, somebody. Right. But I'm sure a woman in his life. It's usually a woman who says, you know, listen, you're, you're going to get yourself killed. You need to do, you know, if you. Need to surrender, surrender because you're going to get yourself killed. And from the look of the clock, that took five hours. Yeah. We, as we understand, this happened in the six o'clock hour where he made that last attempt at getting away by shooting yeah. at those deputies, but ended up barricaded in the home. But that was about 6:30 to 6:45. We are nearing midnight, and they are finally, uh, finally gotten this individual to, to give himself up. Yeah, and he uh, obviously saw the tactics being used and probably was able to realize something clicked or maybe he was calling somebody, I don't know, talk to somebody who said, this, you can't get out. <laughs> it's not going to end well. You have to come out peacefully because you're cornered. You can't go anywhere.